الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين والسلام على إمامنا وسيدنا أبي محمد الحسن الزكي المجتبى الشهيد عليه الصلاة والسلام in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, my dear brothers and sisters, greetings to all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Another dimension of Imam al Hassan's life, since we are living through the anniversary of his birth on the second year of the Hijrah in the city of Medina on mid-Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. We mentioned some of his characters and some of his contributions. When it comes to generosity, he was the embodiment of sharing and giving. A person comes to him asking for some financial help. And the Imam would not hesitate. He would ask his family to open the safe box, al Khuzana, when they open it they take the whole money. He asked them to take the entire amount of money found there and give it to this needy person. Thousands of silver coins. He did not leave anything for himself because he knew that God is going to replace him as the Holy Quran states. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ Whenever you spend, then God is going to If you spend this in goodness, in a good cause, for a good cause, you are not going to lose it. You are going to gain it and recover it. And you're going to get multiplied much, much more. And when he passed by another person and that person was standing in the middle of the road raising his head asking God for some aid, the Imam listened to him. He said, Oh God, give me 10,000 coins, dirham. So the Imam went to his house and he sent him the amount with one of his servants immediately. Another occasion where the Imam was asked, someone was interested in the dab that he used to ride, the means of transportation. The Imam immediately disembarked and he said, you can take it. Here you are. It's yours immediately. In the embodiment of generosity. He would give left and right. Left and right. People would come to his house in his scores. And they ask for help any sort of help he would not hesitate but to provide them and to give them another occasion where the Imam purchased a ranch in the city of Medina from some people of Al Ansar the helpers and then 
he knew after that they needed some place to live after selling this land to the Imam still they were looking for a place so the Imam returned the land to them but he did not take the money from them he had given them the money the price of that land which is 400,000 dirham and he returned the land to them and he did not ask for refund because he knew that this family are in need now why do we say these stories does that mean whenever someone comes to us we look how much money we have if we have ten thousand dollars we give him the whole money no this is not what is meant by these stories these stories are to galvanize and encourage us to give to share sharing because he was asked the imam was asked yabn rasulullah man asharrun nas man asharrun nas he said asharrun nas man la ya'ishu fi aishihi ahad the most evil person is the one who does not share his life with others he refuses to share his life meaning he's so selfish that he gives nothing to anyone and when he was asked ya ibn rasulullah wa man ahsanu nas he said man ashraka nas fi aishihi the one the best person is the one who shares his life with others so here we are talking about sharing how can you share how can you give some how can you contribute you must contribute we are not asked that let's give the entire amount of money so people become happy give your house and you stay in the street give your car and you go walking to your work no this is not the intention this is not what we mean what we mean is that look at this example of charity and generosity and learn some to give some of that to those who live with you and around you one day muawiyah bin abi sufyan asked the Imam he said to him Ya Aba Muhammad there are three thalathu khilalin lam ajid man yujibuni anha three traits three definitions I am looking for nobody was able to answer me about them and I am looking for their meanings their definitions there are three terms I'm looking for their definitions first one al muru'atu the second wal karamu the third one an najda can you tell me the meanings the exact meanings of muru'ah karam najda the imam said al muru'atu إصلاح الرجل what is مروءة مروءة today maybe the basic meaning of it is chivalry Imam said and then he was explaining the details of مروءة he said إصلاح الرجل أمر دينه when you fix your religious affairs your religion is safe and healthy وَحُسْنُ قِيَامِهِ عَلَى مَالِهِ and then if you have some money some business you know how to manage it well so you don't go bankrupt some people they had many businesses 
But then they went bankrupt. Some people had companies. Then they went bankrupt. Now they have nothing. Muru'a is when you take care of your business so you don't lose it. You do not become reckless with your business. وَإِصْلَاعُ وَحُسْنُ قِيَامِهِ عَلَى مَالِهِ The third, وَإِفْشَاءُ السَّلَامُ You walk among the people in the community and you greet them. Fourth, وَالتَّحَبُّبُ إِلَى النَّاسِ Getting emotionally close to the people. Making yourself attractive to people. Not just physically attractive, morally. Your behavior is beautiful. They like your behavior. They like your etiquette. They like your manners. This is the meaning of التحببوا إلى الناس. So this was the meaning of مروءة. Then he said the meaning of karam. Karam, the basic meaning of karam is generosity. He said real generosity العطية قبل السؤال. You give before you are asked. Real generosity is when you take the initiative and when you give, when you help before that person comes to you and then stretches his hand and says, please give me. You don't wait. You give before. وَالتَّبَرُّعُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And then you donate your kindness to people. Donating it means you don't expect any return. When you do something good, there are two cases. Sometimes you wait for people to do good for you. And in some communities, they have an expression which is bad. Of course, they think this is good, but it is bad. It's un-Islamic. When you do something good to them, they tell you, we will do, one day we will do good to you. We will return this good to you. You should not say that. You should not say that. Because the person who did good to you, he did it for the sake of God. He didn't do it that one day you do good for him. You don't have to say that. It's not good. It's an insult to the one who did good to you. It's an insult. You are cursing him. <laughs> you are not being kind to him. You are not being nice to him. You should not say to someone who did good to you, one day I will be able to return this good. He's not waiting for that. It means you are telling him, you did the good not for the sake of God. You did it so you wait for me one day that I will return this goodness to you. This is an insult. This is not a compliment. This is a complaint. Don't say this. When you do good, لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. You don't expect any return from the people. والتبرع بالمعروف. Donate. تبرع means Donate your goodness. Don't expect for a return. And then, وَالْإِطْعَامُ فِي المحل. That you give food where it deserves. Where it is needed the most. في المحل. You give the food immediately. Don't keep the food until after Ramadan, until after the Eid, until after this night or that night. When there is a need, you have to give immediately. Don't wait. This is the meaning of karam, generosity. And then he said one najda. In najd, najda today is rescue. When you rescue someone. He said an najba an najda the meaning of rescue is when you defend your neighbor. Who is the neighbor? Is he the one that his house is next to my house? 
This is one dimension, one meaning of neighborhood. A neighbor is anyone who comes and settles next to me, close to me. He could be a guest. I have to defend him. I have to protect him. I have to take care of my neighbor. We should not betray our neighbors. We should take care of those who live in the neighborhood. الذب عن الجار والمحامات في الكريهة محامات is to defend to shield at the time of distress كريهة you shield the people some people run away at the time of كريهة and distress they are the first people to run away they run and run and run faster than running in the marathon. The first people to run away. However, there are others who stand. They don't run. They stand there to defend. وَالْمُحَامَاتُ فِي الْكَرِيهَةِ وَالصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الشَّدَائِدِ Najda, rescue also means steadfastness at the time of difficulties not collapsing not being weak at the time of difficulty this is some of the wisdom of the imam that he taught to his enemy imam al hasan salam had a very strong personality wasil ibn ata one of the leaders at that time it says كانت على الحسن عليه السلام سماء الأنبياء وبهاء الملوك when you look at him you see the expression of the prophets and messengers on his face and the dignity the honor of the monarch and this is exactly what the hadith says when you are with God وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ عِزًّا بِلَا عَشِيرًا وَهَيْبَةً بِلَا سُلْطَةً This is exactly what the Imam says himself, Imam al-Hasan. He says, وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ عِزًّا بِلَا عَشِيرًا If you seek dignity, strength, without family, without tribe, وَهَيْبَةً An honor, بِلَا سُلْطَةً Without government. فَخْرُجْ مِنْ ذُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ عِزِّ طَاعَتِهِ Save yourself from the humility and the disgrace of sinning and disobedience against God into the dignity and the honor of obedience إِلَىٰ عِزِّ طَاعَتِهِ Unfortunately, this Imam suffered a lot after the martyrdom of his father Amir al-Mu'mineen although people accepted him as being the caliph but then there was another troublemaker in Syria by the name of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan who did not submit to the Imam who did not pay allegiance to him but rather he chose to fight this Imam to fight against him and he mobilized the troops to come from Syria all the way to Iraq to fight this Imam. And part of his troops, part of his people were some people who were lost, some people who were confused, some people who did not like the truth, did not like Ahlul Bayt. Some people who were brainwashed by the propaganda machine of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. And some people, they were searching for money and wealth. 
They were not searching for truth. There are people who search for money and, it, and, and wealth in this life. They don't care about who's right and who's wrong. Right and wrong are not issues with them. How much money you make is an issue. So they decided to join the army of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan to fight the second Imam, Imam al Hassan. And Imam al Hassan was outnumbered by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. The army of Syria was about 60,000 soldiers, while the army of Imam al Hassan were only 12,000. And therefore, Imam al Hassan did not want to go into war. And he opted for a ceasefire. And Muawiyah said, Yes, I accept the ceasefire. And Imam al Hassan said, But I have conditions here. For this ceasefire, I have many conditions. One of them, I need you, Muawiyah. If you become the caliph, then you have to act and behave upon the book of God and the sunnah of the Prophet The second, I want you to stop cursing Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali salam. Third, I want you to stop chasing and torturing and persecuting the followers of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen. Fourth, you don't have the right to, you don't have the right to bequeath the leadership and the khilafah to your children after you. Fifth, you should leave people in peace. Do not agitate. Do not chase anyone. Do not torture anyone. Do not allow your secret police and your army and your soldiers to go after people. Give them peace of mind. Leave them alone. Don't interfere in people's life. Muawiyah said yes to all these conditions. But Muawiyah is not a person that you can trust. He's non trustworthy. So when they signed the pact, Imam al Hassan gave concession. He abducted the Khilafah because he was short on helpers and aides. And he went back from Kufa to Medina. Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan came to the city of Kufa and he went to the Grand Mosque. He stood there and he said, I have given Hassan ibn Ali my word, but I am not going to honor it. And I am going to put it under my feet and step over it. And Muawiyah took the Muslims into the dictatorship path, totalitarian government. And from that day, Corruption multiplied in the Muslim society. When the leader is corrupt, a leader is like Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, who has no devotion, is not devout to his message, to the message of Islam, then definitely the people are not going to learn and the people are not going to have the right example. And ultimately, Muawiyah asked one of the wives of Imam Hassan through bribing her. Corruption was widespread that even the wife of the Imam was corrupt. Just like some of the wives of the prophets. Some of the wives of the prophets 
and the messengers were corrupt. So ultimately this wife, she puts poison in the food of Imam Hassan That was a special poison that Muawiyah asked from the Roman Empire. He sent special delegation, envoy, to the Roman king asking him for the strongest poison they have. The Roman king said, this is forbidden, we don't use it against anyone. Muawiyah answered him, I need it for the grandson of the man, which is Imam Hassan, he's the grandson of the prophet, the man who threatened your empire, who threatened your empire, Roman empire, give it to me. He sent it with this envoy, so he brought the poison and to this woman and she put it in the food of Imam Hassan alayhi salam and the Imam he uses, he eats the food and he gets poisoned and then he dies. On the 12th, the 12th of the month of Safar of the year 49 of the Hijrah, after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. A fruitful life, a life full of struggle, contribution, and integration. 47 years, the life of this Imam. On the 15th of Ramadan, it is his birthday occasion. We remember him. We celebrate that occasion by speaking about Imam Hassan and his attributes and his stand and his legacy and how we should follow him, follow the examples of his kindness and generosity. Follow the example of his compassion and solidarity with the people. A man of humility, a man of forgiveness, a man of tolerance. This is exactly what we need nowadays in the, in the Muslim community. Islam is not short on fasting and prayers. Islam is short on or the Muslims are short on manners and dedication and commitment. They don't have enough commitment. This is what we are short on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the Muslims during the month of Ramadan so they learn from their Imams and they get inspired from the Prophet peace be upon him and the Imam to be able to instigate this change and this transformation to the better inshallah so they can save their dignity they can save the future of their kids they can live in some happiness and dignity inshallah may Allah bless you all thank you I leave you with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these nights and in just a couple of nights we are receiving the nights of destiny, the nights of Qadr. We have to be prepared for them, inshallah, psychologically, emotionally, physically prepared so we can make the most out of them, inshallah. These are the most important nights in our life during the whole year. إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرِ So we have to take advantage of these nights inshallah. May Allah bless you all. Of course in North America and Europe the first night of destiny is Wednesday. So that is the night of the 19th and then we have the 21st and the 23rd after it inshallah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh